And I wanted to talk to you today is um, just that the beginning phase of what does it mean to look for purpose? How do you know if you, what your purpose is? And it's not about making it your life mission to discover that because a lot of times the more you're living and the more intentional you're getting with your life and what's important to you, uh, you're going to find your way to or recognize it along the way. So, but you move with action. But there's some ways of identifying where it is. And uh, I don't know if you can see that it's going to be backwards. But purpose is... It comes from the center of, so your, I don't think you can see this, your experiences, your, um, no you can't see it, your strengths and your skills, your personality, um, just how you're wired, your, um, the people and the passions, the people with the problems, the situations and the pain points that you relate to the most, and what you're passionate. And if you don't feel like you're passionate about anything, then um, that's okay. Not everybody has to be passionate about just one thing and make it their big thing. Um, passion starts with being curious about something and wondering. And then sometimes it moves into interest and you're like, okay, I'm going to explore this further. And sometimes it's a passion. And what I find passion sometimes comes with... Um, overlapping maybe with your strengths and your skills or an experience that you had you you didn't know you didn't experience it yet so you weren't passionate about it or the people or problem that you've been through you're now passionate about someone else or it just maybe you don't use the word passion maybe you hear about something and it gets you fired up because you're like well there's no need to be like that because you know I had this breakthrough therefore you just need to think this way, or you just need to do this, or you just, it's so simple for you, you're passionate about it, you don't have very much tolerance for someone else, or you're like, oh, well, I can help you with that, because I've been through that, I know how to simplify it. So purpose happens, purpose kind of blossoms from the center of all of those things. And, you know, this is my like raggedy envelope, I just found it on the table here. So passion, so purpose comes from there. Passion, in, or your purpose, sorry, is, it, like I've said before, it's who you are. It's a part of you. And so when we talk about one of the questions that you might be asking yourself, it's, you know, it can be, how do I live on purpose, you know, with who I am and where my life is at today? So maybe you're home with kids and you've, that, being there for your family is what matters most in the season of your life. And that's what you can do well, and you're not ready to do that. There are seasons of our life where purpose shifts. So when I talk about, um, and so that's okay, and you could be content with that, but maybe you're, you still have that hunger for, oh, I'm, there's something more. So what does that look for like for you in that season of your life? How do you make the most of this season? Because maybe it's a setup for the next season in your life. You don't have to figure it out and comp accomplish it um, all your life. And so, um, three questions. I should have written down because they're already escaping me. But when you're asking yourself, what do you know? If you're wondering about how to be more fulfilled or find meaning in your life or purpose in your life, what I've realized when I'm talking with clients is that means different things for different people. And so it would be it's good for you to understand what is it that you're really looking for. So are you looking for a, a way to produce income that's meaningful for you and your family to support your family? Is that what would make you, is that what would bring meaning to you? Because um, that's what some people are looking for. You're entrepreneurially wired. You're like, you don't want to fit in this kind of box. You know, like I need something that is me, but you don't know what that is yet. How do you, is it, is it income that you're looking for in fulfilling work? Um, and maybe that's a career and maybe that's a project or a side hustle or something like that. Um, Hi, somebody else just signed on to awesome. So that so are you looking for income? 
are you looking for a sense of value? So some of my clients have come to me and they're saying like, I need, I just need purpose. I need something. And they thought they were looking for, you know, I need a job. My purpose must be my job and I don't have one right now. So I need a job. But when we pared it down, yes, they wanted that. But at the end of the day, the, the purpose wasn't, they didn't care if it came with money. They wanted it to know that they could help somebody, that, that she could impact someone with her life, that her life was more than just an extension of herself, that she could actually bring a hope and a smile and solve someone's little problem um, if she could in that day. And so maybe, so maybe, okay, so there's income, there's value, um, and there is uh, just a meaningful contrib contribution. So she was so she was looking for meaningful contribution, but then sometimes they're looking for value. In order, I need to feel I need to feel valued in my life. I need, you know, if I have a purpose, that means I'm worth something, and therefore I need to achieve something so that I'm worth something. So you're looking for value in your achievement. I want my purpose means I've accomplished something, and therefore I have value and fulfillment. Um, and the thing is, is purpose is beyond all of those things. One of those, if you're just looking for purpose in one of those things, it's gonna fall short for you down, down the road. So you can make income that's fulfilling, but your life ebbs and flows the whole, your whole life. So as you grow, as you change, you might get bored with some of the things that you, that used to fulfill you. The seasons change. And that's okay. There's not a right purpose in your life. You're not going to miss your path necessarily. You're not going to choose the wrong thing if you're asking those best questions. Um, and but, so vocation can fall out of you know the work that you do and it's fun and meaningful, but you, you might not be paid for it. You, your job or your role at home might be the important part of your life that feeds and funds your your avenue for purpose right so maybe you make in a job that's what you do and you're content in your job but your fulfillment needs to come from something outside of that and and usually that means that when you unpack it all it comes with serving someone in some way um, if you're looking just for the value of accomplishment, what if you achieve all those things? So I've met people who've had like three doctorates. They're educated. They've achieved these amazing things. They've climbed the corporate ladders. They've, they're like super mom or they, they've done all of these things and accomplished these, but their life still feels empty. So your value doesn't come from your achievements either. You can't, you know, you can't earn your value that way. What happens, and I believe in God, um, and my purpose comes from God because I believe He designed me and He just didn't, you know, make blobs. I believe there is a purpose in that. And so when I see that my my value, I can't earn my value to God. I'm not going to make my life like, you know, I'm going to earn my reason for existing. No, I believe that because I was made with a purpose, therefore, it's meant to bubble up out of me, out of gratitude. It's meant to point the way back to him. It's, it's a, an avenue of fulfillment. Um, so you see that paradox there is your motive behind wanting purpose could be what, what is blocking you from even finding it because it's not truly what you're looking for. Um, hopefully that makes sense to you. So are you looking, when you think of purpose and meaning, are you looking for um, a means to fulfilling income? Are you, uh, are you looking for value? Are you looking for um, meaningful contribution in, in your life in some way? Uh, so those are, those are important questions. Now purpose, so that's the one thing. And then what happens when you find your purpose is there's our being, right? And then what happens is, uh, my marker's running out here. So 
there's my little drawing All right so you know this is our you know our being who we sh what shaped us who we are you know inside and out and out of that flows what we do right our thoughts and our feelings the things that have shaped us our beliefs our our values you know in our in our innate sense everything that's inside of us flows out of action it's what we our choices our decisions the direction we go with our life and all of our little choices you know end up in the direction of one big one so when I talk about you know because I say I'm a purpose and calling coach so I talk about the being and help people and how my clients like you find you know identify what are the experiences, skills that have shaped me, my personality, what are the people that I can identify with that I can help in, you know, what are my passions, what would light me up, what energizes me. So I figure that out. But then the calling part is your mission. It's where you're headed. It's what you're doing with all of this and flows out of it. So it's your plan of action towards that impact that you want to make. Um, and so that's where, yeah, Mariska, that's where it comes down to narrowing your niche and figuring out, so, right, because if you're just headed in one general direction, well, then anything goes. But if you're more, but then you also don't, your decisions throughout your day, your choices, your directions are this big, big deal. Either anything goes, doesn't matter what you pick, or, um, or if you're like indecisive like me, if you don't have this perimeter for making your decisions of yes or no, each decision is this draining big deal that that actually takes energy from the important things because you're like, well, I don't know what the framework for my decision. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. So your calling helps you actually narrow that. So when you're deciding this is the impact I want to make in this person, I'm going to let go of all the other people who need me or the other issues that need solve and I can't solve every issue in the world and I can't do all of this with my time so I'm gonna choose this one so I can do this one really well you laser focused in that way in the power you know if you think about a hose and if you the more pressure you put into it the more concentrated the water is and the more targeted it is right and then the more you broaden its impact it kind of falls and it's lighter and there's a purpose in each one but for the sense of calling and purpose when you can get that understanding then everything points to that um, it's a lot more complex than that because you can decide your direction and if you believe that God is the author of that direction and the author of that story that you're you want to tell with your life then um, there's there's ways where he's he might hold you back it to from actually the doing part in accomplishing things because he wants to grow in you refine in you chip away some of these things that he wants to develop you know he wants you to blossom in this part so that you have the capacity so sometimes it's not just about deciding willpower i'm going to go for it and then it makes it all happen but the calling part is about making the strategies that propel you in that direction, right? So that's the last few days of our challenge, dare to align. It's choosing what are your priorities, what are your, um, what's, what is your purpose? It's defining that. It's choosing, you know, who do you relate to and who do you want to impact so that you can feel guilt free when you say no to the other people because you made your decision. It's daring to, it's deciding and releasing, right? The, the releasing, you, in order to go in a direction, you have to choose that direction. That means you can't go this way and you can't go this way if that's where your path is. You're at a crossroads. And it's so hard to, to do that releasing to say, okay, I'm going to let go of those other things. Um, and it's planning. So you're making, okay, I'm going to have movement and traction towards this direction in my calling. And yes, I'm open if I need to adapt along the way and change course. Or, you know, sometimes we think just because it's heading in this direction, therefore it's going to end up here. But maybe the path that you chose, you know, it's a little bit windy and it's going to end up here. But this is the path that you chose. 
Um, does that make sense? It in our world and on Facebook and what the world likes to tell us is that it's one straight, clear path. And what I've seen when it comes to the calling and purpose sense of it, it it's not always. Um, it's not always clear cut and straight cut. It's not always black and white, like you got it right or you got it wrong. There's flexibility. Hey, Amanda. Um, there's flexibility in it. So uh, let me see what your questions are. Drop your questions if you're watching. Um, so it says, you, relating to what you're saying, you're struggling to narrow down your niche. Um, an octopus wearing so many hats, it's not productive or profitable. Yes, right, so so there's so many things that you can't do well. Um, one book that really helped me wrap my mind around this and put words to it is called Essentialism by Grand, um, Greg McGowan. Have you read that, Mariska? It's, it's really good in setting that mindset of simplifying your life and your focus, but also then how do you get the mindset enough to release those things? right? Because you can always know, oh, I should only be picking one thing. But if your heart can't let go of those, your heart's still going to be holding on, even if you've said verbally no. And so there's, it's, it's bringing your heart and your mind to believe that when you let go of some of those octopus tentacles, so to speak, that you can do it with peace in your heart. And in trust and this is where the, the big thing is for me it's in my, my relationship God or there's the trust that when I let go of it it's gonna be taken care of that need that person those are gonna be taken care of because I felt aligned with this is what I'm about and I'm not you're not actually doing those people those situations a service by just showing up a little bit maybe um, and I've had some tough seasons in my life where I feel like I'm holding everything together, but there's no movement forward. And part of it was because it wasn't mine to hold together anymore. I was holding it for someone else until they had their wake up call to do something about it. But they, they didn't have the passion yet. So when I let it fall, and so some of this was in my day job, even in my church, um, you know, processes, systems, it just wasn't time yet for it to figure out. So I had to let it fall and it felt like I was letting hard work or things that I invested fall to pieces because then the weight of it fell not just on me, the weight or the consequences that fell on somebody else. And then other people started seeing, oh, we should solve this and they started owning it. Um, but they didn't, they didn't own it while I was holding on to it. They owned it when it was kind of left there unattended and they found their own sense of purpose um, in in taking it on and so whether that was like roles at my church there's one time where there's a bible school and they were the leadership was really passionate and they wanted it to happen and i was doing administration but there wasn't the time and the, the vision to move it forward and i was like oh these these young adults like I loved the passion and their future and their potential and there's so much we could do with them and it was a, a help to the church but at, at some point I was feeling burnt out and I couldn't I couldn't hold it together I, could, I was spread too thin so I just finally had to say I can't like we can't do this anymore either we're going all in with this and we need more support or we let it go completely right it's um, day eight you know decide and release and we had to decide we're letting it go and releasing it and one day I think it will will start up again so it's these things where it's a matter of trust to say and this is where I said at some point in the challenge um, part of the trust and the surrender is realizing that you are part of a bigger story and maybe that part isn't meant to be part of your story maybe it's meant to be some part of somebody else's and it's part for them to own because it's part of what their purpose is and they aren't, they aren't, you know, going to take it up unless they see the full weight. And so anyway, these are my kind of rambling thoughts of, of purpose and calling and, and the tensions we live in and the heartfelt, you know, 
I want to do it all. My heart is so big. I want to help everybody. I want to be there for my family, but like sometimes I need to be made for more. There's this tension. There's this paradox. It's not, it's not always black and white and clear. And what I've learned is it's, it's okay to be in the mess. It's okay that you're not productive all of the time. It's okay that, um, some seasons are, you know, we had, you know, your day dare to dare to rest seasons or moments or like days or moments, but sometimes you have seasons of rest. Sometimes you have seasons of alignment because you gotta, you know, you don't just decide in a day, I've got to align my life and, and you can sketch it on paper, but then working it out and having the tough conversations with who that impacts. It takes a while. It takes seasons. So, um, that is why I am passionate as a purpose and calling coach because it's, it's not clear cut. That meaning fulfillment we want to have doesn't just happen with a snap of a finger or a, a nice mapped out plan on paper or your schedule even, you know, so without it, it won't happen if you write, you know, if you're not writing it down, but, um, clarity is a process in your courage building and your confidence building. It's a process sometimes. So, um, Mariska, you're saying it's kind of related to what you're saying. Oh, uh, yeah, I already read that comment. Um, it's making steps forward even if I don't 100% see what's going ahead of me. Just stepping in faith and trusting God. Yes. So someone that I um, adore dearly talked about. Have you ever watched Indiana Jones? Um, uh, I forget which one it was. But where he's in that cave in the chasm and he has to go to the, chal the chalice and there's this chasm and he's got to solve this riddle and he finally figures out the only way he can step forward is it feels like he's stepping forward in this black chasm and he can't see any steps there's no path and he just has to take a step and when he does somehow the step actually falls under his feet and so he steps on it and he has to take another step and there's no step there until he actually takes the step. Sometimes faith feels like that where you're just taking the step forward and trust and we aren't, we're in control of are we going to take the step or not but sometimes we're not always in control of the outcome and that's what the faith and the trust is all about. And it feels like every lesson that I've been through in my life in the last um, like eight years, it always comes down to trust. When I'm working hard and working my butt off um, towards what I, where I thought I was being led and meant to go, and the product, the productivity isn't there, the results aren't there, and I think, oh, I wasn't meant to do that. It comes down to trust. Is this? about a bigger story than myself? Is this not about this moment, but is it about preparing for another moment? It, there's just trust and faith. Um, sometimes it takes faith to wait and do nothing, but sometimes it takes faith and trust just to do something, trusting that the clarity is gonna come along the way. Amanda, you've been feeling a long time that you need to leave for your dream to become a reality but struggle of, of knowing when. Yeah, the knowing when sometimes is, is hard and I think the more aligned you are with your purpose, the more you move towards it. Um, you know, like sometimes paths can merge or you have paths that walk side by side and then sometimes it goes farther apart and farther apart until you can't straddle them anymore. There, it, it's until you reach a crossroads. I literally can't go forward until I do this. And then, and then you decide and release. Um, and so, again, that's trust and faith, knowing that you're going to know when the time comes and you know what's looming ahead of you. But um, right now, you don't have the go-ahead to leave in a sense. You don't, if you don't feel that really strong urgency, then you won't. Um, and, and that's what this, um, step eight is, is all about where there's the phases of it, right? It's the, you lean into it for a while and maybe you try it out and when you don't feel peace 
when it feels too combobulated, it feels like pieces are missing and, and it's not quite settled, then you're like, okay, the timing's not right yet. Um, and, and then you go into maybe another season, you try it out again, is it time? Is it now time for me to leave and things start falling into place? Or you just have this piece, like, okay, I just gotta do this. And it, and um, things, it's, an adventure. This is why I call living a life of purpose and calling is an adventure because you don't, you can't always predict what's happening. You can't, you don't always know how it's going to happen, but there comes a moment when you realize I literally, and, and I came even a couple of years ago, I realized I can't stay in this spot anymore. So I need to do something major just to change so that this, so that my outlook is different, so that I have new insights. Um, and so that's what, that's why I always think about it as crossroads. There's a time where in your, even in your, it can be literal, um, you know, you had a baby and you want to stay home with your baby and therefore you're going to create new options. Or your kids all go to school and they don't need you as much and you're like, okay, I literally have to do something different. Or maybe it's just something grows inside you and all of a sudden it's reached capacity. And sometimes in my life, sometimes that's been burnout where I'm like, okay, I pushed and literally I, I burnt out and my body decided for me, you can't go there anymore. Um, so when you're at a crossroads, then you make the decision and you um, go for it. So that's what I'm all about. It's humorous, that's awesome. Yes, so I want to share with you, so our um, our 10 days wrapped up, but I'm going to pop in here on Friday mornings and with any questions and answers along the way, I'm going to be posting things along the group. Um, love your input of what you like talking about. Post your own adventures in there. You don't have to wait for my post. Just post your, your wins, your struggles, like as you've experienced, we just love being real, right? We just like knowing someone else has this question too, because chances are if you're wrestling with it, someone else is too, and they're, they need to know that they're not alone. But I just wanted to let you know that if you are ready to dive deep into this, if you're ready, you know what? I'm exhausted figuring this out alone, and I don't want to waste any more time just, just doing that. Um, you and you're like, okay, I'm ready. I need someone to help me focus. I need someone to help clear my mental, my mental clutter. I need to figure out and articulate what exactly is my, my calling, my niche. How do I, or maybe you've decided your niche. Okay, I know who I am. I know generally where I'm going. And, and now I've just got to button down and do it. And you're, and you just, for whatever reason, it's, it's a struggle and it's hard doing it by yourself. And it's, this is an opportunity to ask for support, to say, oh, how do you, how can you go further faster than you're on your own? This is why I fell in love with coaching because having been on both sides of it, coaching releases potential in you that it's, that's hard to unlock on your own. It draws out of you what's already in you. It's not anybody giving you advice. It's not even, peer coaching isn't even mentoring where it's telling you all of the steps, you know, what you do. Um, it's, but it's drawing out from you. These are the ideas you have, helping you organize your thoughts and making sense of it and just getting clear and then helping with that decide and release process so that you don't take it back again, so that you aren't finding yourself, you know, with one tentacle and all of a sudden you have eight again. Um, and so it, what I have open, I have, uh, six slots open, um, for my signature coaching and for purpose and calling. And that is four months of, of dedicated support, two calls a month where we choose three to four modules and we customize them to where you are at in your journey of this map. You know, are you figuring out this part? Are you figuring out this part? And how do they all weave together, right? Because it's hard to actually separate all of them. Um, 
so that you can get clear on your direction. You can make that the progress that you want and you stop spinning your wheels um, or taking all the effort that it takes to do that and you just start lightening your load and just getting clear. You start eliminating all the weight of trying to do everything and you just pick this is what I'm working on for three months. Let's just focus on this. So you're going to find out more about that. I'm still working on bringing my website up which fell apart last weekend. So I got the one page up for you guys so that you could take a look at it. Um, emilygrabatten.ca. I will put it in the notes here. Um, right now it's the home page because I haven't gotten anything else up yet. But, um, well, there's no link in that one. Oh, well, I'll fix it later. But uh, So you can, if you want support and you want to figure this out so you can be confident, um, narrow down your niche, figure out how to be most productive with your time and how to release what's distracting you and and then start making that impact and getting out there and being seen so you can make that impact and, and help people the way you want to. So that is what I am passionate about. I want to help you. I've experienced the transformation of coaching. Um, when people believed in me on the times where I didn't believe in myself, when I felt like I didn't have anything to give or I didn't know who I was or I didn't know what was unique about me and someone could call it out in me and point it out and then I could own it. It's powerful and so I am really excited to be able to offer that to you. Amanda is smiling. She had the time of her life last year grew leaps and bounds. I'm so proud of the progress you made, Amanda, because you decided to invest in that. Um, it was beautiful. And so if you are ready for that and you realize, you know what, this year's got to be different and I'm, I'm not going to do it alone anymore. Not because you can't, but because it might take you four times or 10 times as longer figuring out your, on your own. And you've realized, okay, I'm done with that. I'm going to make the progress the best way I can. So that's what this is all about. Um, so if you are curious about how that looks like for you, um, I have what we call discovery calls. And really that's just hopping on a phone with me. I hear a little bit of your story and what your challenges are. And then, and then we just figure out what are your options for support. And it's no pressure because for me, I'm like, I believe who I'm meant to work with, it works out and you're going to feel that tug and you're going to make the best decision for you. But I want, I don't want you to make it out of fear of holding back. I want you to make it because it's the best decision for you. And so on that call, we just sort out what are your options and, and what does that look like for you? And maybe because I'm going to be up front, I don't want to support you if I'm not the best person for where you're at in your journey. If I know somebody else and I'm starting to make these connections all over. If I know somebody else who you're like, oh, you know what, this person is really good at this and you need this, this problem solved, you've, you've got the rest, then I'm going to recommend them or I'm going to, um, you know, help you see some of those other options. So bye Amanda, <laughs> a screaming baby. So if that is you and you just want to explore, um, then hop on a discovery call. If you go to my website, I'll put the link in the, the comments here too. Um, book a call with me and we will, or message me if you have questions, we can quickly sort that out. And even if we, either way, I love talking with you and meeting your, and hearing people's stories. I love it when I hear either you don't quite believe in or figure out what your dream is and I start seeing it for you or I love it when you are so excited about your dream and I get so excited for you and we just start saying okay this is what this is the path that you could go so I love both parts of those journeys so if you are ready for that then um, let me know DM me or um, head to my website and there's a link on there um, to book a discovery call and we can get that sorted out. Along the way, let me know your journey, your wins, your questions, um, your niche, what you're passionate about, 
comment in the group, post what what's happening in your life about that, and let's live on purpose this year. Okay, have a great day.